This video brought to you by Southern Bancorp, where your opportunity is our mission. Welcome to a Henderson State Sports Network special. I'm Cyrus Wittick. I'm joined by Henderson State head football coach Scott Maxfield, and we are talking National Signing Day. The Reddies signed 38 new faces to the Henderson State program yesterday, and today we're talking about all the additions to the Reddies program. Uh, I got my list of recruits in front of me. I got some talking points, so, so let's get right into it. Coach, when you and your staff are sitting down and vetting a, a potential prospect, looking at film, what are you looking for on tape, whether it's an offensive lineman or a defensive back or any other position, position group? Is there you know, any one thing that you say uh, that young man would be a good fit in the Henderson State program? Well, the first thing we always look at is their academic records. They're, they're solid students. Uh, we look for athleticism. We do a thorough background check to make sure they're good citizens, get good recommendation from their high school coaches, but also if it's somebody that uh, we feel like we'll fit into our culture here with our program. Sure, sure. You've put together a great group of coaches here in Arkadelphia, and I know each one of your assistants has different responsibilities when it comes to recruiting, but with recruiting being such a massive undertaking, how do you divide and conquer the recruiting process with your coaches doing individual work, but also working together and communicating as a staff to make sure you're putting together a balanced, well-rounded group of newcomers each and every year? Well, for the just talking about moving forward, our coaches will start right now on the 2022 class, so it's a year-long process. Everybody's got a recruiting area, uh, so we'll start going through back through our recruiting areas. Everybody's assigned to a different area. I've got all the coaches have an Arkansas area, and then each one of them has an out-of-state area. So uh, we'll start gathering information on the 2022 class, but that, that's just pretty much how we go through it. I think if uh, all these guys have been here a year, it, it's helped and get familiar with their areas and get to know the high school coaches uh, that they work with. Hey, you mentioned a, a little bit of the continuity. Every coach coming into this year had already had one recruiting cycle at Henderson State under your guidance, under their, their belt. So how important is and how important was your coaching continuity with your staff to help identify, recruit, and find players that, that fit the offensive and defensive identity of Henderson State football? Well, the way we like to do it here and it, it does. It is a learning curve for a new coach. You know, I expect each coach to have three to four hundred prospects uh, by the time we get to August. You know, that way we have a lot of guys to evaluate with the recruiting process. Uh, we, we try to evaluate everybody. We look at a lot of the D1 schools will come in and take some of those guys, and so our list sometimes starts large and then kind of goes down a little bit as the process uh, comes about. So. Got to start with large numbers and sure. try to identify the guys that we fit with our program. Sure. Just looking at the list uh, and the breakdown of this class, 22 of your 38 signees listed as defensive players. Obviously, in college football, guys make the switch from defense to offense and offense to defense all the time. But with that being said, was there an emphasis on the defensive side of the ball when you set out to build and construct this class? Uh, it was. We, we were a little bit down in some numbers in certain positions. Uh, defensive back, we felt like we needed to. Uh, upgrade our talent level, but also get stronger numbers there. Defensive line, you never have too many of those guys. We're a little bit down in numbers there as well. So we, we put a lot, large emphasis on uh, those positions specifically. What about offense? I know that you've got two great receivers coming back uh, in, in Elliot Curry and in Chase Lodry, but what, 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 what were you looking for um, on the offensive side of the ball as you set up to recruit and bring another class of newcomers to, to Arkadelphia? Well, we're always looking for playmakers and guys that, that are explosive and score a lot of touchdowns. So with, with Chase and Elliot being seniors and uh, a couple other seniors on our roster as well, we were looking to upgrade and, and uh, replenish our position there. We've discussed, um, you know, we've discussed offense, defense now, looking at geographically. I notice, again, 19 of your 38 signees are in-state players from the state of Arkansas. Uh, I know we've talked in the past about your recruiting starts in Arkansas and you build out from there. What enabled your staff to be so successful recruiting in-state talent this season? Well, I think the big thing is we started early. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we'll, you know, we'll start right now for the next year's class. But you know, getting to know those kids, getting them on campus early, getting them to our football camps where we can evaluate them in person. I think those are some things that are very important. But, uh, you know, we, we always start here, and then, you know, we'll branch out for certain positions if we can't find it here in Arkansas. Of the Arkansas, the 19 Arkansas uh, prospects that you brought in, 
every Arkansas high school football classification is represented uh, across the gamut. 2A to 7A, big schools, small schools, everything in between. Is that something your staff is proud of? Well, we, we're going to hit every school, so we evaluate everything. The difficulty is, you know, the 2A kids are harder to evaluate just because the angle of the film, the quality of the film may not be as good, the level of competition, so you have to kind of, uh, you know, predict mm -hmm. what, what, what that kid will be able to do at a higher level. Sure. So, but we, we do look at everybody and try to give everybody a fair evaluation. Now that signing day is in the books, I'm sure you and your staff are, are, are looking forward to spring football and are eager to get that started. Walk us through the schedule and, and, and kind of a broad outlook of what is on deck for your program through the rest of the spring semester. Well, we've been in the weight room uh, January and February, but we'll start spring football in March. Uh, go two weeks, take spring break, and then come back. And, uh, our spring football game will be the first week of uh, April. Try to, try to guys, get the guys in the weight room. Yep. Just try to get as big and strong as we can right now. That, that's really the emphasis we're trying to accomplish. Coach, as always, I appreciate the time. Uh, I, I, I Congratulations on, a, on another great signing day. And, and I know I speak for everybody when I say we're all looking forward to the fall and looking forward to the, uh, the 2021 season. Well, we're, we're excited to get back on the field. and our guys are ready. and uh, They've worked hard. and We've done a great job of trying to keep our guys safe in this. So, uh, I know we're excited about 2021. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.